Yeah, hi all. Welcome to another session of Mobile Base Banking Jain. So this is in Mobile Jain. So I'm a technical architect at MNC. I'm getting it certified. I'm attending Facebook events. This is my LinkedIn URL. So you can feel free to connect with me. So for upcoming sessions, uh, I keep it updated on my LinkedIn as well as we have WhatsApp group where we have we share the technical content as well as upcoming sessions. So you can join that as well. And if you want to have a one-to-one -one session with me, you can book it on. Document as well. So uh, that's all. Now today we will be covering the the scenarios related to trigger. So let me just share my screen and then I will will just go over the trigger based scenarios. Uh, so before we get started, uh, uh, I would uh, want it to be much more interactive and. We'll go as some of the most common interview questions as well, like as we go. So the first thing is like, uh, why does we need a trigger? So trigger actually is a callback. Like when I know like a particular task, I, I if any checks or any logic has to be applied, I know when to apply that. Initially, like in the database systems, like uh, triggers were applied or as a database trigger in the legacy systems, like in SQL and others. The similar concept is happening in Salesforce as well. So here also we have a trigger. So the format of a trigger is typically trigger. This is a blog by David Louis. So the same thing what he is saying is if I, you need ID, then you go with after. Otherwise, you don't need that. Okay. So I just, anyone who needs this link, I then I will paste it in the chat as well. Like if you want to refer it in future. Okay. So I think the base is clear, right? So we can get started with the actual scenarios. Yeah, so we are going ahead with the trigger scenarios. I'll first copy paste this scenario in the notepad. So that it helps me track like uh, what I don't have to look at the PDF file again and again. Uh, be very much careful like if this is asked during the interview process because there are, when a panel asks you to write a trigger, it's not just he's looking at the logic. He is trying to understand what are the best practices you are following in, how you structure the code, whether what kind of naming convention uh, do you follow. So everything is being judged on based on what kind of code you write. So how do I break down this? This is a problem statement, right? Write a trigger on account when an account is inserted automatically account billing address should be populated into shipping address. Uh, first thing that is written is trigger on account. Okay. What it means is like, I will have to write a trigger. So I'm writing like a account trigger. I know like it's on account, so I'm writing that. Now, here like I need to understand like uh, what callback could be needed in. Here he is then saying like when an account is inserted, he is basically mentioning insert. I know like it's going to be insert. But what's the next line? He's, next line he's saying like automatically uh, billing address should be populated in the shipping address. It talks about population of any large field and we have already in the golden rule, like when anything is related to populating it on the same object, then we'll have to go with before. So we are writing this before insert. We're only writing it before insert because he is mentioning only on the insert. If other seniors are mentioned, we'll have to handle it explicitly. Here again, I'm adding that condition if trigger dot is new, uh, trigger dot is before and trigger dot is insert, then I will follow it. Now I'm going to implement a very basic uh, trigger pattern, which any of you can use in your interviews.
Now I'm creating a trigger handler for that. I know you might you might think like it's quite silly. Like, why do I need to implement all of this logic? But panel is going to judge you on everything, like because that's the only code that you are actually writing in front of him. Now there is another like this is your trigger handler. Now there is another class that we, you would need. That is account service, which will contain the actual logic. This is a kind of utility or domain class. It might be possible, like suppose like here, I'm writing it. Yes, suppose you have multiple uh, logic to be implemented in this before insert. You can will have different methods in the account service and then you'll be doing the call here, like how I'm doing it. And now this specific logic, if you want to run in the after as well, you would be able to do that. So more modularity would be there. In. So that's why how we structure the code. Now it's saying like billing address, it's an address. Address, if, uh, uh, just to make the it clear, it's a complex uh, compound field. Compound field means it's made up of different, different fields. So address is broken down into city, state, country, latitude, longitude, geocode accuracy, postal code. These are the different fields that are there. In. I will just open the org for now, one minute, so that the things are a bit more clear. This is my day org. Like I will go on one minute, I will just go on the account report. The original was like uh, city and all, but the street, sorry, I prefer the street as well. City, country, postal code, state, latitude, longitude. There's another street. So this is a compound field. Compound field, you will can't directly assign it as it is. You will need to iterate over all those fields and then do the population. So what she's saying here, it is saying is the shipping one you have to put in the billing. So what I will do is I will use the for each loop. We will pass in the account here.
I can even write account list as well. Will make up to Have any one of you heard about personal accounts? Hello? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, there is actually an interview question around personal accounts and triggers. Do you know what, what which triggers would get executed if a personal account is inserted? Whether it be contacts trigger would be called or accounts trigger would be called. Any guesses? I think account. Yes, it's account. Uh, there are some scenarios where trigger won't be called. If suppose you are doing any mass update on the users or you are doing changing the record type from business account to person account, that time the trigger won't get called. Why is that? It's it's of limitation. They are documented. It. Let me just show that article. Okay. Mass of mass actions, mass address updates, mass revision updates, mass approval request, mass email actions. Update account triggers don't fire before or after the account uh, if this account is changed to person account or vice versa. This is another catch. Whatever can be. You have to be very much careful. Sometimes you are debugging that and you realize like trigger won't get called. You would be thinking like why it's not working, why it's not I'm getting it. So sometimes, like uh, we normally ignore this uh, uh, things. So, but sometimes you will have to. Uh, we need to check this.
even the triggers would get called for the, these ones if you have the validation and triggers are enabled for them in the org. So I think this question is uh, clear, right? Uh, I think it was pretty, right? Mm, yeah, the accounts one, right? Yes. Yep. Uh, anyone that has any doubt on this, please feel free to ask. So, this was around our very first scenario. So, I think... Uh, uh, it's pretty much clear, right? Now I will go with, with the second one. Again, I'm repeating if any doubt is there, please let me know. Now, just for like it's on the uh, logic is more or less similar, like I'm just copy doing the copy paste. Uh, like the same trigger handle and everything would be there and the difference would be like if it is like with the same name, it should prevent. Here's another catch. So I will uh, rename it. Check the tickets. And how it's the duplicacy? Duplicacy is with the name. See, preventing. Preventing is like you would be in the code, you would be using add error. That is very much clear from the question itself. Otherwise, how will you prevent it? You won't have any other mechanism. So again, it is a before insert. Now there are two scenarios that can happen in this. Like suppose we can have like, through the anonymous window, I can put these two and insert it in one go. Correct, that is pretty much can happen. Uh, please acknowledge. And second scenario is, I have an existing record of XYZ and again I'm inserting new record by the name XYZ. These are two scenarios which could happen for duplicates, uh, duplicates accounts. Uh, am I what I'm saying in is making some sense or so the scenario I'm talking about is while well, I'm in trying to insert two accounts Okay, yeah. Like, uh, let me just simplify that. I can, um, last one. This is one record. This is one scenario like if, uh, if I insert just this block and then after that I insert this, that will be duplicate. It can also happen like what I do is I create a list of accounts. And then inserting, instead of inserting it that one row, I add it in the list. Yeah. 
here as well like it would be a duplicate record by the name last name if it is the same correct yeah both, both the scenarios can happen we will need to handle both of it both of it so first what uh, primitive check we will be doing in is we'll going through or we'll go through all the records and then i will create a map map of string from a account Here is the not sign. That is a special catch. I assume like everybody knows about uh, the collection framework. If not, like map is actually a key value. And uh, whenever if you try to put that key again, then it would override the value field of that. So suppose like earlier it is like A is the key and one is the value. Then again, if A comes and you mention the value three, this will override the original one. So in the end, you will be left with A corresponds to three. So this is the one. This is the worst first scenario where within the list itself there are duplicates. Okay. Now what I will do is after this is being done, I will make a query. The reason I use map is I get the key set directly. So it would be quite easy for me to process. We are using the in clause uh, in, in for multiple comparisons.
Yeah. So this is how it would be. We solved it in two scenarios. First is like within checking within the list and second is doing the query. It could happen like you might say like even uh, we could have done something like we can handle it in uh, one loop or something like that. So this is like very simple to understand the logic that is being provided in here. What we are doing is like we are getting the name and corresponding to that we have the entire instance with us. So second time this uh, uh, record is coming in with the same name, then we throw the error. Next is we are uh, doing a check against in the database if the name is uh, available with that, uh, whatever we are, is it being inserted, we throw the error. And then the framework is uh, the same as well. There's no change in that. We are having that trigger. We are having it in before insert. We are having the trigger handler where we are handling the before logic and we are calling the domain class with this thing. Check duplicates, passing the list. Any questions so far? Yeah, this is actually a very good question. In your inter, see, this is all that is like very silly question or anything like that you might think, but please avoid writing the dot gear size method while in the interview at least. In TCS, like I, when I was being introduced, instead of the context variables, I use I you also use this uh, is uh, size greater than zero. There as well the panel pointed out like why utilizing that. So. Always go use the is empty method instead of doing the size uh, doing the size check. The reason being it said like performance of is empty is much better than the size method that is available. So always go with uh, is empty. Okay. And it has uh, like if there are uh, mm, all in in that. Uh, batch we have two records of the same name and uh, again we in uh, we have already uh, record saved in our database with the same name so uh, two scenarios first scenario is within the list that you're inserting and it already has the duplicates yep so that will be taken care of by this like we're editing it and here itself we are checking like we're creating a map for that reason only mm -hmm. So this would check like if the, in the list there is already a, with the a record with the same name, it would add error there itself. Mm -hmm. So it won't proceed further at all. Yep. Even uh, you can use a return statement here itself. Early return. This pattern is called early return. Mm -hmm. Got it. And suppose if, uh, if you say like, uh, uh, there's actually a good, one good scenario, like you just uh, help me, say, me say, talk about that. Suppose like we are doing a data load and there are like more than 200 records. Uh, the first chunk would get executed, like the triggers are getting called twice. If it is more than 200, like it breaks it into chunks of 200. And does the commit. So suppose like there are in the, in the first record and then in the 201 record that uh, name is same, still this would be handled that logic would, uh, this logic would uh, take care of this. So your logic should be such like uh, even the uh, edge scenario should uh, get covered. Uh, I assume like uh, uh, any other yeah. questions? So this is clear, I guess, like, right? Duplicate uh, accounts. You can go to the next one, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is the, yeah, this is actually a good question. Uh, here it's like, I can insert the record. I'm assuming means I'm just checking the account record because we are working on the account. So the code structure would still remain the same, but there are a few catch that we need to handle. It 
if current user profile see current user is another key important word how do you get the current user your user record your user will return all users in the system but your user info would give you the logged in user information is the base clear yeah okay anybody has any silly doubt as well we can go over that yeah so we need to check like if the current user is profile is system admin now here here i want to make this all of that logic what i basically need is if the current user's profile system admin, if it is not a system admin, I should throw error. What it simply means. Now, what I can do is like, I will get the uh, account user info, let's get profile ID. I will store it in a variable. Now I will query profile. And now I will solve two things with one. And system administrator. Now what I have done is like I have applied like system administrator name as well as the ID. Like I don't have to do the two queries. In one query itself, like if that ID is matching it and the name is same, then I um confirmed like this user is a system admin user. So here what I can do is here again I would have to make the best practice is like list of profiles. And I can add the check. I can go add the error and zero the limit. So that's pretty much simple. The only thing here you need to know is like the functions that user info offers. So for a minute, we'll just go over the functions like so that all are at the same page. Uh, is there anyone like uh, uh, who is not uh, clear on this? It's clear. Okay. And now we'll go to the next one. So to prevent deletion. So first scenario, this is actually a good question. Major scenario is like suppose there's an account, okay? There's an account A1. So suppose it has two contacts, C1 and C2. Then if I try to delete the account one or A1, it should throw an error. 
I need to check like what there are how many contacts are there and if the count is greater than two, then I need to prevent it from deletion. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. So again, we'll go to the very basics, like how to identify like which will be the trigger point. Here it's very mentioned like on preventing account from deletion. So my trigger point is like when I will try to click, uh, when I will click the delete button or the code I will be writing the delete method, that time it should do this calculation. So let's write a trigger on that now. I'm working the structure. Make a trigger out of all the good past. Actually, there is one thing I wanted to show you as well. One thing context variable con considerations. So this is very clearly mentioned around what context variable could be available, which won't be available. So before delete. You can't change the field in the trigger out view. So it's allowed for before delete. After delete, nothing there. So, this is an important table. So, here we have the before delete and just opening records. Now, here what we need to do is check contacts. So what I would need to do is like I will have to the simplest way to do it is not have it as a map it's a list itself better would be I have it as a map You can actually use like uh, a normal trigger thing work. It's like it supports both the ones, like with the, what you need, it depends on the requirement. So, if you want to just the list, you can have that. Map is more preferred because you get uh, both of it, like the ID and the list. Um, here, I will be just passing the map. Is a particular reason like I wanted to use map because I want to I have to query like on the account to find out how many related contacts are there in.
why it's contact because it's a child relationship name. Here I can add the check. So even like we didn't, I didn't put account instance dot id is because like here it's iterating over the account list. It is the data coming out to, from the database. Like it's a query record, so you won't be able to add that. So I picked up the one that is being passed as from the trigger, and then I use the add error. So this is how like we need to handle the deletion of an account if it has more than two contacts. Uh, are the things clear? Yes. I think this scenario the next one, like having a uh, contacts or not. So the uh, logic would be same. It's just instead of the size, you will have to apply is empty. Other than that, the scenario is pretty much the exact same. So I don't think like it's uh, any value addition like we'll get. I think we what we can do is like we can go with the supposedly scenario. It was this and this both are conceptually same. Here the count is mentioned to here it's like greater than zero. That's the only difference as I see it. Or you want me to go over this? No, I think it's fine. Oh, let me do that. Because the condition is will be different, right? Condition is just like here it's two contacts, here it's only if it is even one. Then we need to prevent that. That's the only difference. Only one line would change here, this line. The entire logic would be the same. I think in the interest of time, we should go over like what are the important areas. I think this will go. We'll change change the sequence. We'll uh, target like the tough ones first. So those are like quite simple. So to trigger whenever a new active user having a system administrator is inserted, add the user to the public group admins. Okay. Now the things are getting a bit complex. So 
here the catch for who don't know like adding people to the public group is actually there is a separate object public group assignment there is a separate object that is available which needs group id user id as the parameter i'll show that object That eventually is the same scenario. Group member, sorry, yeah. My bad. Group member. Since it requires ID, uh, then I will have to go with after the insert. So what we do is First, I need to get like if so get those users which have the profile system administrator. So we did uh, this check here. So here, what I will need to do is this population. <laughs> First thing what I will need to do is I will have to segregate those users which are system administrator. I'll iterate over the users and what I will be doing in is like creating a set of ID.
I think the better way would be data map of ID, comma, list of users. Upper profile ID. Uh, so profile ID is the field that we create. This one is actually a bit complex. Has anyone uh, worked on group members object? And I have worked on it. So I have created this map. So what I will be doing is I'm going to filter out those profiles which are system admin. Means I want to get only those users. So what I can do is I'm going to avoid extra call loops. That's a simple way. Is a I mean, that's the only way that I'm going using maps extensively. <laughs> to get the data. What this would give me is like, this would give me those reports like where the profile ID would be like say, uh, some X, uh, I think it would start from G0E and the actual record would be therein. Now this would, uh, has the key of profile ID comma list of users. So what I would do is, I will iterate over this list of users that I did. One iteration, anyways, I will have to do, otherwise, it will become too much complex. So, we do understand.
So what I'm doing in is I'm adding in I'm adding the list itself. Now these would are all the system admin users. Now what I want to do is like what are those system admin users? I would want them to be added to the public group. Now what I will do is so I have like it all in the list. Now there would be another Look that I would be have to add it for users, which are only system admin. I don't have to add any other uh, checks or prevent anything. What I want is like what are system admin users? Those should be added in the public group. Now, before doing this, what I would want to do a check is, if suppose there's no system admin and user, I shouldn't be doing a query at all, right? So I will add that check. If the, so if there are no system admin user, uh, if there are system admin users, then do a query. Ideally, like you should be putting this advanced name in also inside some constants class, or you can declare it as a final variable. Now, just for the namesake, I'm just putting it as it is. I'm just doing the query now. I won't have that perfect group, but I can just show you like what are the different names that we get or what are the fields. So these are the different different public groups that are there in okay. So what we'll be doing is we got this. So I did the query of the foot group after confirming like there is some admin system admin the user. So that this logic is not, uh, the query is not run every time. Now what we are going to do is like we need to create the group member records. So we have created the list, like I have declared this variable. Here, like in each group, I will have to do Okay. 
improvement by instance dot group id will be equal to admin group dot id. Dot mission or group id. Since the public group can have a public group inside that, so that's why the field is user group ID. We will have to check the fields that are available in the public group. Yeah, I think these are the only two. Now we have this one. Now I will check again. Is it empty? Yeah. Now it's done. It was actually a bit of complex. Like first, we need to get all the users. From those users, like you can't directly get the profile, or you do a query and then disturb everything. So first, what we do is like you get the entire all set of users, get the profile ID out of them, create a map of profile ID to list of users, then. Segregate like what of those all of those users with their uh, profile, which are the ones that are uh, uh, those users, which users are system administrators. Then collect those. Then check like if those uh, public groups, uh, if those users are available, with the public group by the name admins. And then what you do is like uh, you would want to uh, query that and create a list of group members. Group members and then insert all of it at once. Any questions so far? Any object like it is not clear inside this one because it's actually what a little bit complex as I see it. But yeah, it's good like you. Yeah, it. yeah, because actually sometimes like in my mind uh, it was that only, but uh, mm -hmm. I missed. But yeah, actually it means you are the only one who is attentive. <laughs> Yeah, this yeah. similar sort of question was asked to me like few three years back by some small scale company to write yeah. the whole logic. Yeah, it's actually a bit uh, complex. Around like uh, group member, not everybody recollects the um, fields on the top of their head. The core problem is that other than that, other field profile ID and other things are quite simple. Uh, is anybody having any slightest doubt? Then please, uh, we can spend more time on this because it's actually a bit complex and it is quite. This question is uh, very much popular, and all the panel ask you this question. Nobody can help you with that if you don't know this. It's like the similar one which we did before. Like no, just... no, 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 no. This is here. Different. We'll just need to add a map with account and the integer count, right? But we can fetch it the same way. Mm. See, it's similar to roll up summary or different? It's actually a custom uh, roll up summary, you would say, because roll up summary happens okay. only on master detail. But this is a custom, yeah. Okay. So here, here we like, have to it, fetch the number of accounts. So the number of contacts related to that account, right? Tell me like one which object will the trigger be there? When you will be uh, on or what will the trigger 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 will be on which on object? Contact. Yeah. Anybody there like who is not able to uh, get it clarified, like why it is contact? Let me just explain, like, uh, see, uh, there's an account, the A1. Now, the 
there is another field, like say I call it contact count. This would get increased only when the contact is inserted. So my trigger point is like on the contact insertion. Or I can also update an up contact and change the account. Actually, so this uh, in this there are multiple scenarios that are expected, and for simplicity, we are going with just insert and update. Yeah, uh, like on delete also, it would be useful, yeah. right? Yeah, on delete would also be there. It would actually consume too much time, so that's why I was thinking that we have three minutes, and I think implementing this in that time might be difficult. Let's try. Yeah, and contact like <clears throat> on the update day, like when like when they ask like when we change the account on the contact, so at both the places it should reflect. Correct. It's actually too much, like eighty percent of the scenarios. Like in the interview, like they should consider like how much, like at least major scenarios are covered. That should work out. Eight scenarios, it would take some more time to think to and implement and debug and all of that. For now, maybe I will change it. Okay. So the very first thing I need to do is like I need to create the all the account IDs. So, so what I will do is to create a set of IDs. Now I have like the only reason like I have put in the user set is because I want to remove the duplicates. 
because there might be two for multiple contact uh, contact with that same account. So just for the efficiency. Now I will do a check. It might be possible like uh, there is a contact without an account as well. Let's name that field as, yeah, contact. Here, we need to also handle like the recursion because it's actually a before like you won't be able to get this information like in the database because you need the ID. So this shouldn't be on the before itself. It should be on the after, after insert. No, I'm just... Yeah, I need the IDs of the contacts. It would be after only. Yeah. Because you would need that contacts ID. A account ID. Also. Account ID, no. Account ID you would be getting yeah. from inside this inner query won't return you the results. The problem would be that. Because it's like when you insert a contact, Account ID already, accounts you already populate it during yeah. the insertion. Or you have it on the, so it's always there. For this part, you just need that in after. Then what you need to do is like, you'll have to. Do an update on the account list.
then actually we'll have to also have a check. And then let me select where we can apply that check. Otherwise, what would happen once this is uh, update is called, then again this entire trigger would get updated. Uh, trigger would get inserted. Uh, would get called. We'll pass this as well. Okay. Why well, after insert it should be fine. Yeah, I think there will be no problem of the question because for, we for, are for, 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 Yeah. Now we'll go over the other one. Before update. The before update, if someone is trying to change that, you will have this contact IDs and then what we will do is, it's again doing it for you on the account, so I think It's looking as if like it would work fine. Because here like it would be doing a query on the account. We have this field. We query the contacts. It would get updated and update would get executed. I don't see for now. Maybe while actually executing it in the org to figure out what's actually wrong but while actually thinking through i'm not able to figure it out like what's actually okay yes so we Yeah, it looks like it would work fine. So, just work okay, we'll just add the blocks. This one is very similar to this one, is quite challenging and would require regular practice. 